G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia and the market has bounced up a little bit. So a nice little 2.3% kind of bounce in the entire crypto market. Bitcoin back at 33,000, so that's uh, pretty nice. ETH, again, sort of reclaimed the $2,100 level. And look, some, you know, some reasonable sort of moves over the weekend in the prices. But that last word that I sort of said, well, not the prices, uh, the weekend is what we need to remember. Any gains sort of made over the weekend are generally, particularly in Bitcoin anyway, we're going to lose uh, that come Monday morning, unfortunately, due to the CME gap. Now, it doesn't always happen. And it might be simply that we just continue to rock it up here, but it's a price that we will probably likely come back down and fill some stage if we don't fill it again over this weekend or sort of come Monday morning. So again, I don't think it's overly drastic news, but it's just something we need to consider. And of course, as I say uh, in my video yesterday, that you know I wouldn't be surprised and I think it's highly likely that Bitcoin will continue to go down. It turns around and does the complete opposite thing. <laughs> So it is so hard to try and keep up with this market. Now, again, this is just more like a little bit of a relief rally at the moment. We'll really have to wait and see what happens come Monday, whether it's something that's going to be sustained or not. And again, uh, it could be nothing other than a relief rally. Everyone's got their fingers crossed and we're all hoping for something, you know, a little bit more substantial and that we're actually finally starting to make our way back, back up. Sorry, excuse me. But we just need to, again, we've always got to have that plan of, okay, if this happens, what am I going to do? And if this doesn't happen, what am I going to do? So we're not out of the woods just yet, as I said yesterday. But hey, let's have a look at how things are going because it's looking good. Again, 1.38, nearly 1.4 trillion. So that's nice. Uh, BTC dominance, 45%. Uh, gas prices risen just a little bit, 28 uh, guay there, gas. And again, that's people starting to get bullish, moving around altcoins, uh, moving around stable coins, getting into altcoins and things like that. Now we've just got to hope that it can last. But again, it looks pretty good. I mean, it's like just a sea of green here at the moment. So what's done the best in the last 24 hours? In? What's our best performer in the top 100? Good Lord. Axie Infinity, I mean, this just continues to go absolutely mental. This game is uh, really blowing up. I wish I had gone on to it, in all fairness, but I'm not going to chase it just because of how far it's gone up. And that's not to say it can't go up a whole lot more, but games, they can be fads and they can come and go very quickly. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to Axie Infinity, but I just can't something uh, can't jump onto something that has pumped so much already. But hey, 66%, congratulations to anyone on that. Mana, Flow, Ucash, Stacks, I mean, they're really starting to move. Uh, Amp, Telcoin, Engine, very nice move. Celsius Network, even better move. Uh, Luna, nice some really, really good movers there. You know, double digits and then some single digit moves as well. What about losses though? Is anything not done so well? Fed awfully. <laughs> no, nothing's fed awfully. We've got a couple of single digit uh, sort of losses there. And then we're really just kind of into the, you know, sort of stable coins and things like that, which are, you know, they don't move that much at any stage. They'll be a little bit above a dollar and then a little bit below a dollar. Uh, Kasama, a very, very small move there. And then, like I said, you know, you're starting to get into your stable coins. So nice gains, a couple of nice gains there and losses hardly any. In the top 100 at least, you go outside of that, probably a different story. But overall, we have moved up 2.3. So that's pretty good. All right, let's move over to the Bitcoin chart and have a look where we're going. So as we can see, we had this nice move and this has been really nice, but we can already see it's a little bit red there. But this uh, candle has only just started. It's 20 minutes into the day. So it's really got a long way to go before we know exactly where it's going. But it is a weekend candle. So again, if we do, you know, get some big pump, just remember it's likely that we're going to have to come back and close that, if not on Monday morning, at some stage. CME gaps, you know, it's like 90, the high 90% of them get closed. Now, not all of them. We've got CME gaps that have never been closed, but most of them close. Now, have a look at this on the RSI. Again, we had this downtrend here, so we needed to break above it to stay, uh, to be uh, bullish. And we just kept getting rejected by it, rejected by it, and it was getting lower and lower. 
well, we finally have broken out above it and come back above. And look, likewise on the MACD, I mean, have a look at that. We dropped down below, boom, we jumped right up. So at least chart-wise, things are looking good. But like I said, it's, it's unfortunate when this stuff happens, you know, kind of close to a weekend or during a weekend because it usually means you lose you know whatever you've made over the weekend come Monday morning but it couldn't be it but that can be very short so let's say you go from 32,000 to 36,000 over the weekend all of a sudden that 36,000 drops back down to 32,000 uh, first thing Monday morning very briefly and then shoots back up to nearly 36,000 and continues to go on so that is a possibility something that may happen but again we're not going to know until Monday morning comes, unfortunately. All right, tons of news stories here. Very, very uh, interesting news stories in my mind and a lot of news stories. We haven't had a whole lot of news other than people talking about sort of price and a couple of stories about institutions buying, but we've got a number of stories uh, coming out at the moment. So Binance US is setting up structures that will allow it to go public through an IPO according to uh, CZ. So again, there's been a lot of fight around, you know, Binance and all the regulations and things that are happening. Look, I think they are going to get them sorted. It's going to take some time, but I don't think Binance is going to fail and go anywhere. I think they will get regulated. Uh, I think he, CZ said they're looking for a new uh, CEO as well. I thought I saw some news out there. But I think Binance will get everything sorted. It will take some time. They're going to lose some market share, which I think is a, a bit of a, a plan by you know some other players in the crypto space. They don't want Binance to be so far ahead. They would like to shut Binance down if they can, but I think Binance will do all the right things to get themselves sorted. Uh, and they will do an IPO and you know copy in the footsteps of Coinbase and a number of other companies are going to do the same. Kraken's going to do the same. BlockFi is looking to do the same. I think it's all just a matter of time. Thorchain, oh, they just can't catch a break. So a second hack and another $8 million uh, gone. And literally within a matter of a few days uh, to a week, they are really sort of struggling at the moment. And it'll be interesting to see if they can survive. You know, to have one hack, you know, not so bad, can come back from that. To have two within a matter of a week, oh. I hope for the investors' uh, sake that they can. And I think, you know, ThorChain's got the money that they can cover this, so that's not an issue. But it is money that they're losing. But it's more just the sentiment around the chain, you know. Can they, you know, be a chain that is not going to be hacked and have so many vulnerabilities? That's really the problem. So, again, $8 million worth of cryptocurrency is hacked. And, again, in a matter of a week, ugh. Yeah, unfortunate, very unfortunate. And, and I really do hope for anyone who's invested that ThorChain can uh, you know, get over this, but it is going to get harder and harder for them to come back if these things continue to happen. They need to you know, maybe pause everything for a minute and you know, have some auditors go through and yeah, get it vetted by some security uh, crypto experts and things like that because it is not looking great. All right, Akala. Uh, so, <sighs> Polkadot and its side chains are starting to come along, or parachains, I should say. They're not side chains. So, DeFi Hub and Parachain Akala has launched its Carrara swap decks alongside what it calls the first trustless trading pair in the Polkadot and Kasama ecosystem. So, again, Kasama is like the test net. And Polkadot uh, is the big final net. So these parachains, things are slowly starting to happen for Polkadot. Polkadot got really kind of, you know, nailed over this uh, downturn. So, you know, for me, I think Polkadot's looking like it's not a bad buy at the moment. But again, I'm not rushing into any uh, altcoin positions just at the moment. We really need to make sure that this trend change for Bitcoin is exactly that, that it's a trend change. Because again, we go back over here, sorry, uh, go back over here, and all it is is just a, a little bit of a relief rally. You know, we break kind of 36K, then I will be start, then I'll start to be a little bit more bullish, but that's all it is, just a little bit more. We really need to break back to 42 and above before I get too carried away, and then really we've got to break above this. 
So we've got this down trending line here because we could simply come up, rebound, and then start to come back down for even more lows. So we've got a ways to go. And again, I'm not saying don't buy any altcoins and it's never financial advice anyway. I'm not qualified in that. I'm just saying I would be you know, putting minimal amounts into altcoins at the moment until we get a clear indication from Bitcoin. Maybe this was the bottom. Hopefully, maybe that was the spring test again that everyone was talking about in the Wyckoff accumulation. Nothing is uh, sort of solidified yet. And again, even those, you know, distribution, I mean, the distribution played out almost textbook perfectly. Uh, the accumulation, because everyone knows sort of what's going on, at least, you know, on YouTube, those who are still in the space. This is probably going to play out a little bit different so it doesn't look exactly the same in the textbook uh, version of it. But that is why I would be very careful in the altcoin space. Again, that's just me. All right, this is interesting. So Rockefeller co-founder, he's going to sell an NFT for $10 million in Ethereum. Uh, the, the NFT is going to be his third in Rockefeller, uh, the Rockefeller what do you call it? Rockefeller Records. Sorry, again, struggling there. So this is the power of NFTs. This is where things are going, that you're not just going to get this bit of paper, uh, you know, with deeds and all the rest of it and signatures. You can actually have something digitally verified on the net that will be the third in uh, Rockefeller Records. Now, what's interesting is Rockefeller Records, I mean, do they even do a whole lot in music at the moment? I don't know. Uh, of too many artists other than sort of Jay-Z and there used to be Beanie Siegel and other guys that were bringing out music but are they still making music now? Not so sure. Uh, I mean I'm sure they I'm sure they probably still are I just I haven't heard of anything but what you would own is a third of all the rights to the music they produced back in the day. So that is where it's interesting as you know any new music coming out I'm not so sure about uh, Rockefeller Records uh, but there also is some disharmony going on in uh, Rockefeller Records at the moment because uh, Dash, uh, Damon Dash, sorry, he tried to sell an NFT that was relating back to one of Jay-Z's, uh, I think Jay-Z's original record. And anyway, there's been a fallout now. There's, now there's a lawsuit going on. But it's funny how he seems to wanting now get out of Rockefeller Records uh, and is pretty keen to get uh, sell an NFT uh, to sell his half as opposed to again just the regular way receiving cash and things like that all right amazon says it's exploring cryptocurrency payments up uh, payments payments and it's hiring a digital currency and blockchain product lead this will be huge if amazon onboards cryptocurrency payments again this is going to be massive for the space really really big news and i think it really is only a matter of time just the fact that they say they're exploring it generally means that <laughs> they're well advanced into that process. I mean, you know, Amazon, one of the biggest online, online platforms out there. And if they start accepting cryptocurrencies, massive for the space. NFTs, again, more news. So a 12-year-old has made $160,000 in Ethereum on NFTs in one day. He made this little crypto punk whale down here with a little pipe uh, and, and obviously smoking a pipe. And yeah, people have gone crazy for it. This is a 12 year old. This is how crazy this space is. Now he's, you know, a very lucky little 12 year old that he understood the, uh, you know, the crypto punk space, obviously, uh, and has copied that. And yeah, people have gone nuts for it. So. Congratulations, what a very smart little 12 year old kid and I'm sure his parents are loving him or her at the moment because it could be a her, I won't just say him, we don't know. Uh, no, that was the other 13 year old kid, but yeah. 12 year old, 160,000 in a weekend by making yeah crypto art. And again, very sort of basic crypto art, but <laughs> what a space it is, what an unbelievable space. All right. Again, massive money still coming into crypto, but in different ways. It's not always necessarily buying the crypto themselves. So New Jersey's pension fund 
chased crypto mining's upside last quarter with multi-million dollar bets on two of the industry's biggest names. So the state-managed pension ended June with $3.6 million in Riot blockchain and $3.39 million in Marathon Digital Holdings. So getting big into Bitcoin mining, they can see what's coming, see the future, see the upside, and say, while they're not necessarily buying Bitcoin itself, it kind of is like buying Bitcoin because it's buying the companies that are actually mining it. So they will get the exposure to Bitcoin from that sense and they'll also get the exposure from the selling it. So mining it, selling it. And look, these companies don't just sell all their Bitcoin. They do hold on to some. They just sell when they have to and when things are, are going well and it doesn't cost them as much, then they hold on to Bitcoin. Uh, and to you know help them get through the times when it gets a little bit tougher but again old traditional sort of finance pension funds hedge funds things like that putting millions of dollars into this space and those millions of dollars will turn into a whole lot crypto hasn't solidified itself just yet once it finally does again in another maybe five ten years time we don't know how long it's going to take then you will see even more money pile in but these three million dollars that they've put in at the moment you know again who knows exactly what they're going to be worth but in five or ten years three three million could be worth tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars possibly even billions of dollars we just don't know but this space is really starting to heat up and again the prices are starting to finally catch up with all this uh, news that we've coming out. Because we've had tons of sort of positive news, other than the price going down and a bit of regulation. There's been so much, you know, money investments being put into places. Again, things like this, but the price just hasn't been able to keep up with that. And now we're all crossing our fingers and toes that finally the price is starting to go, okay, things are looking pretty good here in this space. And there's a lot of money coming in. Now let's start to move the price up as well. And buyers are coming back, hopefully. All right, crypto lender Celsius confirmed on Friday that it has invested $54 million in Bitcoin, Bitcoin Mining Core Scientific. So again, the funding is part of Celsius's planned $200 million investment in Bitcoin mining in North America, according to the company. And Celsius said the investment which in occurred during the second quarter would make it one of the largest US investors in, Bitcoin, in the Bitcoin mining industry. So Celsius starting to make moves. I mean, they pay out all these rewards and most of it's been from, you know, lending uh, and things like that. Well... Why not simply get into the space and you know buy mining stocks so that way they can start paying their members back? And we brought uh, a story, uh, well not we, there was a story that I reported on my channel a little while ago that again Celsius had taken some rewards from their uh, you know Bitcoin mining uh, acquisitions and paid them out to their members. Now I am in the process of getting signed up with Celsius at the moment. Uh, so I have a link for BlockFi down below. I will have a link for Celsius in the not too distant future. Uh, and again, it's things like this that have made me go, yep, I need to get on board with Celsius. I mean, it's not just that, but they continue to move in this space and they continue to really reward their customers uh, quite well. So Celsius uh, is something that I'm currently getting onto. All right, PayPal has poached a top policy exec from Chainalysis, the industry's largest crypto tracing company. So Jesse Spiro, formerly Chainalysis', Chainalysis head of policy and regulatory affairs, is heading to PayPal's crypto uh, wing to work with regula regulatory policy. So again, PayPal, one of the biggest money movers in the world, getting into the crypto space, and they want to make sure that they're regulatory compliant uh, and things like that. And so they have taken someone from Chainalysis to help with that. This space is growing. It is literally going to be massive. Don't get caught up with the FUD, that regulation's coming. It was always coming. You know, show me something that doesn't have regulation and I'll show you something that's illegal and it's just got laws against it. Crypto is not going to get outlawed. The regulation coming is not going to be so heavy handed that it just basically crushes the industry. The governments can't afford that. No government can anywhere in the world. They're worried about the system that they have now, yes, and losing control of it, but they also understand the old traditional finance system is dying. 
It is literally on its way out. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna die today or tomorrow or within the next five years, but I think within the next 10 to 20, 30 years, this, the old traditional finance system will be completely gone. There will be no cash. It'll all be digital. I think cryptocurrencies will be you know, the backbone of the new uh, way going forwards. It doesn't mean the dollar dies. The dollar will survive because of crypto. That is how the do dollar survives. It can't survive any other way. It'll just continue to be printed into infinity, but it will all be backed by things like crypto. I really do think crypto is going to be the backbone of the f uh, financial future going forwards, and all dollars will be, you know, backed by Bitcoin and, uh, you know, Ethereum and you, you name it. There'll be a ton of different crypto assets. Now, again, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. It's what I have seen since being in the space for the last four years and just the direction that we're heading in. All right. Seems like Jack Dorsey's pretty keen on getting Bitcoin involved in Twitter. So Bitcoin is key to the future of Twitter, Jack Dorsey says. He sees opportunities to integrate Bitcoin into services such as uh, commerce, subscriptions, and new features such as the Twitter uh, tip jar and super follows. I mean, you know, Twitter is massive, mainly within the sort of crypto space. It really is, you know, our... Um, choice of platform you know for things you know like there's facebook and youtube and all the rest of it you crypto it, it one of the things that makes me laugh about youtube is cryptocurrency is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and so fast and yet they have been so adamant in trying to you know clamp down on it at times and, and look there's a lot of dodgy ads and stuff going on and not just even ads which you know YouTube have played a part in uh, allowing, but also just dodgy crypto YouTubers who've done some pretty scammy kind of stuff at times. So I do agree that YouTube had to play a uh, a role in trying to clean up the space, but you know they really did clamp down on the wrong people at times and things like that. And I don't know why they haven't jumped on board this whole crypto thing. They are going to. I can one hundred percent guarantee you they are. The pushback is starting to slow down. They do need to clean up the space and make sure that anyone who's, you know, making videos about crypto on YouTube is not giving really, really bad information. Now, no one's going to be perfect and give all great information. That's impossible. You know, people on CNBC have given given bad monetary advice before, you know, mad money uh, and all sorts of stuff uh, have made mistakes and also maybe, you know, <laughs> given some... Uh, market manipulation manipulative uh, information at times uh, so it's hard to really you know full-on police it but i do think youtube is going to get on board and they're going to be a lot more crypto friendly in the future All right last but not least so the sec commissioner is concerned about the u.s lagging behind global uh, bitcoin etfs so hester pierce crypto mum she's come out and said you know, we need to get on board. We can't simply be left behind. There's Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs popping up all over the world. And if the US wants to be at the forefront of the new financial uh, system going forwards, i.e. cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, then they need a Bitcoin ETF and they need uh, an Ethereum ETF and things like that approved before it all just gets too far ahead of them. All right, a lot of interesting news stories there. Again, things are looking good at the weekend at the moment, particularly, you know, when we go over to the charts and things like that. Uh, a lot of green, a lot of green looks great. And again, even BTC looking promising. But just remember, any gains made over a weekend are generally chewed up come Monday morning. Or if not Monday morning, at some stage, it means you've got to come back uh, and cover that uh, CME gap. So that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everybody should be on that game train at the moment, at least in the short term, so make the most of it. And I'll see you next time.